What's up? Welcome to the first episode of Slipstream, where I chop it up with the most knowledgeable, most talented gearheads that I know. They give us the knowledge, sit down, we go for a poodle, go for a ride, get to know each other, and then I chop it up for you a lot. Uh, today I'm out with my mate Harry. Say hi, Harry. Oh, hi. Yeah, yeah. He's totally cool most of the time, honestly, I promise. You're a rider, a little black suit on a visor Man freaks when I ride up I got the high beams on Backfire the bikes like fire in a shot I'm getting my nervous Barely on like the burglars I spot my dog in the same right hand that he murders High five him And tell him man thanks for the service You seem a little weird with the kids in I gave that same smile to the drivers You don't know how deep it gets But I don't really sleep again I got pain in my chest Stress on my heart The best in my rest of the best of my dogs And I just done so many shows The last four nights I slept in my yard for you. Um, so Harry, uh, amongst other things, is uh, quite a sick rider. Been riding for like... I wish. 32 years now. Yep. Um, no, how long have you been riding for? Uh, on the road, uh, about eight years now. But, you know, obviously you did a bit of off-road as well when you're a kid. You know, that's why I started riding, really. Yeah, as soon as uh, the first bike that I had was a uh, SV650. Um, Infamous SV650. It's the shittest, best, shittest bike you can buy. Listen, for anyone who is looking at Harry's blade at the moment and is thinking, that's what I need to be doing. Harry was on a, like, let's not even just say SV650, a rickety 90% cable tire duct tape Pretty SV650 much. for like, what felt like a lifetime. Probably crashed it like five or six times. SV, but um, you can learn a lot on smaller power bikes. I think people, try to skip that stage of their riding a lot of the time. They try and get what everybody else has got, like whether it's an R6, whether it's an R1. Yeah, very, very silly. Terms of, in terms of progressing and, um, uh, as I said, building out your experience, getting more confident, um, you've come on leaps and bounds in like the last year, given that you are now a test rider at Visor Down. Indeedy. Celebrity moment. No one recognises me. Even with a throw, man, what the fuck? <laughs> How's that been, man? Yeah, it's been cool, man. It's 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 kind of a dream job isn't it you know what i mean as a biker to be you know to be invited on these launch years in spain and portugal and all over the world you know what i mean it is the dream job it's of course is behind the glitz and glamour there's a lot of hard work that goes into it and you know it is risky business just like riding bikes and i think you know what the one main thing for me is being responsible because now I'm not just on my own being an idiot when I was a youngster on a shitty broke SV. Which was like last year, right? Yeah, literally like two days ago. Um, but <laughs> now I'm in front of the camera and people are going to look at my riding and they're going to be like, that's how to ride. Yeah. So in a way, I've kind of, I do think about that. And I think, you know, as much as people want to see on the screen wheelies and stoppies and all that stuff, which can be done, it, you can't do that on the road because that sets a bad precedent, a bad example for people that will ride on the road. And that's not what riding's about. Riding is about having fun. You shouldn't be like taking stupid risks and risking your life and limb just to prove to someone that you could do something. So like in terms of, uh, as you said, you've been doing this test riding thing, waiting for him to go past with his rad. Shit bike. Blue lights then. All right, anyway, um, in terms of, uh, as I said, you've been doing a lot of developing, a lot of growing, a lot of track days, probably a bit of training. Yeah. Um, What's, what's, what's next in terms of you riding, being a biker journo, 
steps moving forward? Is it is it something you want to grow? Or are you just yeah. Fun at the moment. What's happening? Yeah, man. I can't lie. It's fun. It's fun as hell. Um, and where the next step is? Uh, well, you know, it's launch season, fast approaching. So we would definitely be doing a lot more, um, a lot more sort of new bike launches, which is going to be good fun. Uh, got a good one coming up next month. Um, but really, it's, it's in terms of development, like I just want to keep improving my off road riding. That's probably something I've neglected over the, like the years. Obviously, as soon as you get on the road, you, you know that's that's easy access. You know what I mean? You've got a bike for the road, bam, you're out all the time, um, and you kind of neglect um, the off road, off off road. What the fuck is that? Off road um, side or aspect of riding. Yeah. Um, and I did a like WR 450 uh, launch in Wales not too long ago, and it is just so so much fun. Like so so good. Um, and I think as well, for anybody thinking about doing it, it improves your riding so much. So for some context, uh, when you look at like the pro level riders, you're talking MotoGP, WSBK, BSB, what they're doing in the off season is often um, crosses, off-road, MX. Um, thank you. Thanks. Nice rumble on that puppy. A little rumble. Um, so yeah, I think um, me and my brother have not long uh, bought a crosser ourselves. And, uh, we're looking to um, we're looking to do some some off road content soon. Um, Sick. Yeah. So if you're looking to get some some off road time, um, we can bring the GoPros and have some fun. Yeah, man. Um, what would you say is the probably the sickest bike you've rode as a as a journo? The sickest one for me personally. It's gonna be a shit bike, isn't it? Uh, um, nah. <laughs> well, the electric. Oh, weird. So Imagine. Sick and efficient. Yeah, electric. Yeah, uh, great. Um, obviously, I've ridden the V4 R. Which is the in you know in terms of the biker that is the holy grail of of, of super bikes in it. So Definitely. I've ridden that, but it was oh, it's just gonna sound really weird. It wasn't as crazy as I was expecting. Do you know what I mean? And to be honest as well, it felt a little bit too uh, tippy. Like as soon as you tip into a corner, it would just whoosh, drop down. So it was like I almost felt a little bit on edge. So I wasn't really enjoying riding it that much. Plus it's like 30 plus grand, so I was like, don't fucking drop it. Um, <laughs> So there was that, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I would say the Hyper Motard, the uh, 950 SP, SP Hyper Motard was yeah. just like, it just spoke to me as a person. Yeah. Um, and it's the thing, like obviously people, some people will look at bikes and they'll just see a spec sheet and go, that's better than that, that's better than that. And like, that's fair enough if you like, no, if you like train spotting or whatever. But at the end of the day, when you're on a bike, it's about how it feels and how it makes you feel. And I feel like it's, um, I felt that bike just connected with me on an emotional level. And I just felt like a boss riding it. All right, I think um, we'll wrap it there, man. Um, but thanks for your time. I had a, I had a blast today. Yeah, sick, man. Road. It's been fun. More of the same coming, I guess. Yeah. Sick. Until the next time, episode two. Oh yeah, like subscribe. Was it like subscribe? Hit the link. The, the link. What was it? I'm making that video. Yeah. Hit the lingo. Hit the lingo. Like, Make sure you hit that bell.